Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the last columns here, which are basically the holes and canals that are inside of bones. So they will either have the name foramen or the name canal or the name meatus, but they all basically mean an entrance point to either nerves or blood vessels or even sound waves in the case of the uh, external auditory meatus. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead, even though we've looked at a couple of these already, let's just go ahead and run down to make sure I don't miss anything. And we might even throw a few fossas or depressions in. So remember the difference between a foramen and a fossa. A fossa is a depression. A foramen is a hole. Those names will come up later, even when we're talking about different organs, such as the heart. We have something called the fossa ovale and the foramen ovale. So uh, again, we'll look, if we understand the terminology, it's not so hard to understand what that is. Okay, but let's start back at supraorbital foramen, which we said could also be called the supraorbital notch. Then one of your hand, one of your modules, you actually have the uh, basically PowerPoints of the actual skull models, and part of the section has the foramina of the skull, so the holes within the skull. I actually had a former student do this. She gave me permission to use it. I believe she's now a practicing nurse practitioner, so I'm grateful, and I hope you're grateful for the work that she did to help you learn this. Okay, so looking at the frontal bone, notice again here are the ridges here, which are actually called supraorbital margins and either either be a notch or a hole in those regions called the supraorbital foramen or supraorbital uh, notch. Next we actually have the temporal bone and we know that our ear fits around here so our ear canal is literally the canal that makes up the bone portion it's called the external meaning it goes to the outside, auditory, meaning hearing, meatus. And meatus is another term for a canal. Back to our structure sheet. So we talked about supraorbital foramen with the external auditory meatus. Now let's look at this region because there's quite a few foramen or canals uh, within this. And uh, uh, some of them don't use the name foramen or canal in them, but that doesn't mean they're not that. So let's look at this group right through here, uh, starting with the stylomastoid foramen, jugular foramen, and carotid canal. Notice we're looking at the skull from an inferior perspective, and if you see that little area right there, that's a styloid process. And then this area right through here is a mastoid process. So again, I've got the styloid process right here and the mastoid process here. Well, I have a little hole between the styloid process and the mastoid process, so it's called the stylomastoid foramen. Again, here's my styloid process, here's the mastoid process, so that little hole right through there between the styloid and the mastoid is the stylomastoid foramen. So, stylomastoid foramen between the styloid process and the mastoid process. Let's look at a slightly different picture to give you maybe a better idea of what, where that's at. Looking at this picture of the inferior portion of the skull, again, there's the mastoid process, there's the styloid process, that little foramen between those two is the stylomastoid foramen. Again, here we see the styloid process on that side, the mastoid process here, and then there's a little hole right here. Now, we're not talking about this one, that's the jugular foramen, we are talking about that, okay? But speaking of the jugular foramen, where the basically the petrous portion of the temporal bone meets part of the occipital bone, we have this little hole here. And of course, the jugular veins are going to run through that hole. It's a relatively large hole. And we can see it here on this side. Now, jugular veins are bringing oxygen poor blood towards the brain, or excuse me, oxygen poor blood away from the brain. And our carotid arteries, what's called our internal carotid arteries, are going to take uh, oxygenated blood toward the brain through this little area and this little area called the carotid canal. So notice how the carotid canals are a little bit smaller and they're actually a little bit more medial than the, the larger jugular foramen, jugular foramen. Now both of them are, are basically next to each other from this perspective, but if we change our perspective that's not the case. Since this is a canal, a canal means that it's running through the bone. It's actually, it's actually like a tunnel. 
So if you imagine a blood vessel entering here and then running this direction through the bone, this direction through the bone, it means it's surrounded by bone. It doesn't just go straight through. Now the jugular foramen, on the other hand, it's not a canal. It's just a hole, so the blood vessel just goes straight through. Okay, looking at this perspective, the jugular foramen opens up straight through right here again for the occipital bone, and there's the petrous portion, that internal portion of the uh, temporal bone. So this kind of large hole back through here, not this one on the mountain, but this one here where the two bones come together. This here where the two bones come together is the jugular foramen. Now the carotid canal actually comes out because it travels through this tunnel right here through this meatus or canal through this tunnel right here it comes out right here near the cella tersica and so on this side here's the carotid canal coming out right through here so the carotid arteries actually come in and attach to the brain coming out of these two sides right in this area now don't confuse the carotid canal with a little hole right beside of it and more medial to it called the foramen lacerum or lacerum, you may hear it pronounced both ways. So again, from the inferior perspective, the big hole right through here is the jugular foramen right through here. The smaller hole, a little bit more medial, and inside is the carotid canal. Here again, we see the jugular foramen and close to it, but a little bit more medial and smaller carotid canal, again, from the inferior perspective. Now, the jugular foramen is actually coming out right here but the carotid is coming out further further up. Not that hole there. Let me show it to you. Okay, notice that little indention right there? That's where the carotid canal is coming out. And that's different from the hole that's a little bit more medial to it right there at the cella tersica. Okay, so let's look actually at the internal acoustic meatus and the foramen lacerum. Okay, so first don't confuse the internal acoustic meatus with the external auditory meatus. The external auditory meatus allows sound waves to come in and affect the uh, eardrum, the tympanic membrane. But the internal acoustic meatus is going to come out of the petrous portion, the mountain we've talked about. There's the mountain on that side. There's the mountain. There's a little hole here. And what that does, that allows the acoustic or auditory nerve what's also called the vestibulocochlear nerve, to come from the parts of the ear which lie inside that mountain to the brain, which of course is sitting in here. So look at that little hole, internal acoustic canal or meatus, meatus and canal, mean the same thing so you can use them interchangeably. And the same thing as that little hole right there. So this is allowing the nerves from the parts of the ear, the bony labyrinth, the cochlea, and that area that lies inside of here, which we'll be talking about later in, in our labs, one of our last labs, as a matter of fact. But that little hole allows the nerve to come from what's in that bone structure back to the brain. So, again, I've got my jugular foramen down here, jugular foramen down here. On this side of, on this side of the petrous portion of the temporal bone, I have the internal acoustic canal or meatus right here. I have my carotid canals because it's a canal coming in very close to that on the other side, but actually running and, and exiting right through here near my foramen lacerum. So one of the good things to do when you're learning these is learn these holes in pairs. If I learn jugular foramen and internal acoustic canal on this side, then I'm pairing something up. If I learn carotid canal and foramen lacerum on this side, I'm pairing something up. Matter of fact, notice how I can look at the foramen spinosum and the foramen ovale right here, and I can pair those up. So the ovale is kind of more oval shaped. The spinosum is smaller, but they're always next to each other. Okay. Now, another thing is we've got a round uh, hole right here called the foramen rotundum, and it kind of lies close to, but it would but the what's called the optic canal, which is underneath this lesser wing. So this is a little bit further down, and we'll look and see the relationship of those two. And look, I've got my carotid canal coming out here. I've got my foramen lacerum right next to it. Those two are together. I've got my foramen ovale here, kind of oval shaped, and I've got my foramen spinosum right next to it. Here I've got my foramen rotundum, 
and then right underneath and coming out right underneath the lesser wings of the sphenoid I've got my optic canal so if I put my optic canal with my foramen rotundum I can kind of say well that's a little bit higher up that's a little bit lower down they're both very round foramen here I've got my ovale with my foramen spinosum I learned those two together here I've got my carotid canal where it comes out on this side next to my foramen lacerum on that side look what we've got from the inferior perspective I've got my jugular over here next to my carotid because remember they enter together but this runs through bone so it's going to exit further up through here on the other side whereas on the other side in this region will be the internal acoustic meatus okay but anyway those two are together from the inferior perspective now these two are together on both sides foramen spinosum is always next to the foramen ovale here i've got my foramen lacerum which is always the most medial of my holes except for this big foramen magnum now again the carotid is coming out very close to it on the other side but i wouldn't be able to see that from this inferior perspective but again i can see my ovale and my spinosum I can see my stylomastoid foramen right here because it's between the styloid process and the mastoid process. Okay, so back here on our structure list, we already talked about the optic canals, which that's what your optic nerve is going to run through. We're looking at it from the inside where it comes in underneath the lesser wings, but it's also going to be close to that superior orbital fissure in the orbital of the eye. But the orbital fissure is a split. It's a fissure where the optic canal is going to be a round hole. All right, we did look at the foramen rotundum and the foramen ovale and then the foramen spinosum, which I added to that. So that's one I want you to go ahead and learn so it will help you understand the ovale. Okay, now, so let's look at that optic canal real quick from the other perspective. Here's the optic canal again coming out underneath the lesser wing area here. It's close to that foramen rotundum. But if I look back in the orbital of the eye, again the purple area being the sphenoid bone, notice I got my superior orbital fissure here, but I actually have a round hole right in the very corner. Same thing here. I've got my superior orbital fissure, but I've got that round hole, and that is the optic canal. Obviously our eyes are going to sit in here, so our optic nerve is going to run kind of at an angle through that hole and come out on the other side underneath that lesser wing. Okay, while we have this picture up, let's look at a couple of obvious things. So notice that on our maxillary bone, we've got this hole here below the orbital. So its name really fits its description. Infra, meaning below, orbital, meaning below the eye socket, foramen, meaning the hole. So I've got the infraorbital foramen there and the infraorbital foramen here on my maxillary bone. Now my, my mandible has two different holes we want to look at. The first one that we want to look at is actually going to be on the front of the mandible. It's the mental foramen. Okay, the term mentis refers to chin, so the mental foramen would be the holes near the chin region. So looking at this picture, we see that the mental foramen is in this area right here on the chin region. But we also have whole areas in what's called the ramus, this curved area up here, the inside. And you can see that little hole right there, and you can see that little hole right there. That's called the mandibular foramen, the foramen of the mandible versus the foramen of the mentis or the chin area. Of course, they are both on the mandible, but... One is on the inside ramus, curved area, and the other is on more of the chin area. So I believe we've covered all the holes, the foramen, meatus, or canals. And of course, this one, foramen lacerum, is still a foramen. We just have the foramen at the first part of the name. Um, the carotid canal, of course, is where the carotid artery is going to go through a canal of bone. Starts in on one side, comes out a different area on the other side. Okay, but... Let's look at one or two more to finish up our foramen. And so the, 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 we talked about the mental foramen versus the um, uh, mandibular foramen. And we also even talked about on the maxilla, we talked about the infraorbital foramen. So the last one we want to look at is the incisive fossa or foramen. And the fossa is a depression and it usually has a hole in it called the incisive foramen. So let's just look at that. Okay, here are your incisors. Here's a depression with a hole in it. 
The depression is the fossa. The hole is the incisor foramen. So we'll probably include it all as one. That finishes the foramen.